Hello there guys and welcome to a very quick video of a very quick build. This is the Hobby Boss 172nd scale German Commando Wagon from the BP-42 armoured train which was used by Germany during World War II. These BP-42 armoured trains consisted of armoured locomotives, uh, flat wagons for transporting tanks, armoured personnel carriers, armoured wagons with flak guns, uh, and many more, and a lot of those are produced by Hobby Boss. You may remember a while ago I built this BR-57 Panzerlock armoured locomotive, which would go in the centre of this train. Here it is. Before we begin the build, let's take a look at some reference photos. So here's a modern preserved version of this wagon. And then some archive photos. So to be honest with you, I'm not entirely sure why I bought this kit. As I said, I've previously built the BR57 locomotive, although I do have some plans for that which don't really involve this wagon. And also I have in the stash this uh, WR360 locomotive, which wasn't really part of an armoured train, but was used more for sort of moving uh, uh, rolling stock around. Maybe I just bought it because it's quite an unusual kit to find and I sort of thought it's in the shop so I'll snap it up while I can. Anyway, if we look inside the box we can see just how simple the build is. The majority of the box is taken up by the track sections. These are quite typical in the Hobby Boss kits and of course also in the um, Trumpeter kits which are the 135th scale versions of these, uh, these same subjects. So we have here the bottom of the wagon as a single piece with the four holes there for the wheels. The top of the wagon there is a single piece and the sides as well. So you can see by slotting that on there we've essentially almost finished the kit already. They come with the sleepers in this sort of pebbled uh, ground effect kind of uh, piece and obviously some rails too. And then two fairly small sprues for the details. Instructions are fairly straightforward, so we add the wheels front and back, two on each side, and then we add those backing plates which prevent us seeing into the, uh, the interior of the wagon. Decent amount of detail there considering that we uh, won't really see the detail on the wheel. Moving over and we add the couplings, some grab handles and some buffers in step three the center raised area in steps 4 and 5. Each of these steps is really quick, you'll see. A single piece rail that goes all the way around for step 6, and then the, uh, the entry and exit doorways at either end uh, in step 7. And that's us done, apart from making the rails. So as you can see, the build process is really as straightforward as the instructions make it seem. We can have the option of having the wheels movable here, but I'm not too fussed about that kind of thing. We even have a small amount of detail on the underside of these blanking plates. You will notice on the top of this um, lower piece here, we've got these quite rough uh, sprue cutoff points. That's not being done by me, that's how they were supplied in the box. But they do need removing before uh, we assemble the kit. It's fairly obvious they need removing, but the instructions don't point it out, so it may be confusing for our beginner modelers. Here we have our couplings. And despite that being easy, I've managed to take a little bit too much off the piece there and I've got a small gap in the side. Buffers. Buffers. 
you can see that I slightly changed the instruction sequence here and the last thing I did was add the supports for the rail and then the rail piece on top. That was a little bit fiddly. And despite what I said there in my commentary earlier about it being a single piece, it's actually two pieces, one for each side. And that really is our build complete. You can see the wagon here lined up behind our BR57. So already it's a fairly long model, even in 170 second scale. So if you were to make the entire train, you would be looking at probably a metre and a half or so of uh, wagons. In terms of painting, I don't typically show me airbrushing things because it's just too dark in my garage where I airbrush and it's too difficult to get the camera set up um, in a way that will be meaningful for you. So we've skipped here from the completely um, plastic, plain plastic kit into a completely painted version. I did try to match the yellow with the very subdued yellow that, which I used on the BR57, just in case I do want to use the two together. This was all done with AK Real Colours, so quite thin paint for the stripes, so not quite thin enough because you can see a bit of uh, um, overspray there. But yes, that is our kit. A very quick build, and I'm not quite sure what to do with it. I did originally want my BR57 to come, be coming out of a tunnel in a diorama, so there's not much point in putting this behind it because this would be lost inside the tunnel. But I'm not really sure to be honest. I just thought I'd built it and I'll show you what it's like. If you can think of an idea, and particularly how I could use this with the WR360 as well, then please do feel free to leave a comment below. Of course the big problem with all of these is finding figures in 170 second scale. They just don't seem to be that common in uh, helpful poses. But anyway, the model is finished. I hope you enjoyed this quick video. I'll leave you with some images of it and wish you happy modeling until next time.